Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IES. We all have heard about the Great Barrier Reef. Do you know that it is under so much threat that it will be in a danger list? Now, this is something that we need to understand. Why is Australia not happy with this decision? Or why is Australia not happy with the way things are working towards the Great Barrier Reef? So let's talk about that only. From the perspective of GS Mains paper 3rd, it is important for us to understand this. Apart from that, we are also going to understand the reasons for the threat. Uh, what are the threat? Has Australia done anything to take care of the Great Barrier Reef? What is the current report saying about the Great Barrier Reef and other important things? So, first of all, let's talk about the Great Barrier Reef. What is the Great Barrier Reef? It is the world's largest and most complex reef system. Reef system, that means coral reef system. Okay, we will talk about corals as well. This reef system is larger than New Zealand as well and it is home to many species such as 1625 types of fish live there, 600 types of coral live there, 100 species of jellyfish, 3000 varieties of mollusks and more than 30 species of marine animals such as whales, dugongs and dolphins, 133 varieties of sharks and rays and much more. That means it is providing a healthy ecosystem for so many species to live together. Moving ahead, now let's talk about the extent of it. It stretches more than 2300 kilometers along the Queensland coastline. So this is the Queensland coastline where we can see the Great Barrier Reef and it is made of around 3000 individual coral reefs which are known as polyps. Individual corals are known as polyps, remember, okay? And when they live together, they live in colonies. The cultural significance of the Great Barrier Reef is also a lot because Aboriginal and Torres Strait people live on it. The livelihood depends on the Great Coral Reef. And this covers an area of 348,000 square kilometers. It extends across a contiguous latitudinal range of 14 degrees, 10 degrees south to 24 degrees south. Okay, so this is the extent with respect to latitude as well. It's so important that it was inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1981, but Australian World Heritage Site only in the year 2007, so Australia was a little late. It was also na named a state icon of Queensland by the Queensland National Trust in 2006. But there are many threats to it. First of all, the greatest threat is the climate change. As ocean temperatures are rising, coral bleaching also is occurring a lot. That is creating a problem for the fish, mollusks, dugong whales to live there. Poor water quality from land-based runoff is causing pollution. Apart from that, the coastal development projects are also very indiscriminate. Because direct human use such as illegal fishing as well as bycatch, it is causing issue to the corals and corals also get caught in that. Reef health, that is coral, seagrass and marine life, it has been declining due to poor water quality that is because of the agricultural industrial runoff warmer weather has led to coral bleaching we will talk about coral bleaching as well and because of that there is an increased severe weather events severe weather events are also occurring a lot because great barrier reef is kind of a shield for the queensland and northeast area of australia but because now it is getting threatened uh, the lessening of the numbers of the coral colonies it is causing a great threat to the queensland because of cyclones okay Moving ahead now, let's talk about other important threats. Several mass coral bleaching, bleaching events have happened in the past decade. Excess nutrients, fine sediments and pesticides from agriculture runoff has caused pollution in which the sun's exposure as well as the, uh, you know, because of the sun's exposure and growth of nutrients, it has happened that a lot of pollution has occurred and that is not very good for the corals. Excess nutrients may be linked to outbreaks of the coral eating crown of thorns, star, starfish as well. Now, if we talk about coral bleaching, first of all, we have to know about corals. What are corals? Corals are known as polyps. Okay. When they live together, it is known as a colony. So, corals are basically these invertebrate animals. They depend, uh, depend on a algae that is known as zooxanthellae. So, zooxanthellae lives with coral and because of the living of the xanthali with corals, because it is a symbiotic relationship, it gives color to corals. And the corals are depending on this algae for the source of their food. What happens when this healthy coral, it goes through 
very high temperatures because of the rising of the ocean temperatures the zooxanthellae or the algae it leaves the corals then what happens the zooxanthellae was giving food to coral and corals were giving a shelter and protection to zooxanthellae now this symbiotic relationship breaks down and when coral loses the zooxanthellae of course it will lose the color and of course the source of food so then it starts dying it becomes pale in color that can happen through change in ocean temperature that can be from heating as well as too much cooling as well runoff and pollution over exposure to sunlight and extreme low tides as well so these are the many reasons why coral bleaching happen now if we talk about the initiatives that have been taken by australian government there are many reef 2050 is a long term sustainability sustainable plan it is actually a response to the recommendation of the unesco world heritage committee that please take care of the great barrier reef and this regularly reviews the state of conservation of all properties which are inscribed on the world heritage list moving ahead now let's talk about billion dollar reef protection package in which an investment for conservation of the reef reef has been done the investment is 1 billion dollar and marine science latest kind of marine science uh, is being invested in apart from that water quality and on water management is also being taken care of reef trust is the flagship investment program to support the reef 2050 long term sustainable plan sustainability plan here the government committed over 1.3 billion to the reef trust to address key threats to the reef and at the center of this investment is the 444 million dollar partnership between the reef trust and the great barrier reef foundation so coordination has also been done apart from that reef restoration and adaptation program was launched uh, in, on 16th april 2020 uh, there is it was done in order to do the research and development phase of the reef restoration adaptation adaptation program here multiple stakeholders such as government scientific institutions industry and non government they work in partnership in order to conserve the great barrier reef now if we talk about what does the iucn world heritage committee report has said it has painted a bleak picture of the great barrier reef's current state it has said that the gbr is being impacted by climate change factors and this is impacting the resilience of the great barrier reef and frequent bleaching events have made the reef sterile degraded water quality is also a problem the management of the property lacks clear climate change goals that there are no set goals it is very you can say uh, very blurry in nature there is no clarity moving ahead now if we talk about the other important things that this report has said the implementation of the current plans are also not up to the mark and ensure and land based activities are particularly responsible for the degraded activities that means the government has to take care of first the management of water quality and fishing activities that are being done in queensland and pollutants from agriculture and construction activities are also a problem moving ahead now if we talk about what needs to be done the committee has provided uh, the report has provided some suggestions as well such as adding the gbr to the list of world heritage in danger so this particular list the australian, uh, australian government is completely against this list now it is also saying that monitoring and evolving farming practices so that agricultural runoff and um, pollution can be controlled greater commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions specifically uh, this points to the changing of the climate rising of the climatic temperatures addressing land erosion on the coast so that pollution does not impact the reef and adopting sustainable fishing practices as well this is also very important moving ahead now what does actually what does it actually mean when the great barrier reef could be when it would be put on the list so in this particular list list of world heritage danger what does this mean it is actually a list designed to inform the international community of the conditions which threaten the very characteristics for which the property was put in the heritage world heritage list that means for some for uh, suppose there is a uh, there is a property x okay there is a, a basic thing about that property because of which we put that property on the list of the world heritage list but if that very characteristic because of which that particular property was put on the list is being threatened then this list will come into the picture so in order to do that of course this list was evolved and here whenever a, a property is put on this list then it will encourage co corrective action that means whatever problems are occurring in that heritage it will be corrected 
Now, under the 1972 World Heritage Convention, it will make it possible to allocate the funds which are in the World Heritage Fund to the endangered property. So, Great Barrier Reef will get a lot of funding as well. And simultaneously, international support will, will be garnered. Most of the times, countries do not like it. Why? Because it brings embarrassment to the countries. Embarrassment to the countries and that is why. So, why is Australia pushing back? First of all, it will bring embarrassment. Secondly, it is difficult for the UNESCO to enforce any of its recommendation, that is for sure. But being put on the list does invite greater scrutiny. Scrutiny with respect to how you are keeping and conserving the Great Barrier Reef. So, it can have a tangible impact on all kinds of development projects. Because of these development projects only, the government gets political power. So, it does not want to disturb its political ground as well in the country. Same as for Australia. So, the panel has recommended that you should phase out gill net fishing. Gill net fishing catches many other unwanted organisms that actually is indiscriminate in nature. So, gill net fishing has to be phased out. But it, the government, because of this very thing, would have to make substantial investment to compensate fisheries. So, funding process, how to do that? Apart from that, the government would also lose goodwill among the fishermen of Queensland, which is a major vote bank. Australians understand more than anyone the importance of the reef. That is what the Australian government is saying. And in 2021 too, when Scott Morrison government was there, and uh, back then also it was said that Great Barrier Reef should be put on the endangered list. So, then also there was lobbying against it. The current government is also going to lobby the same for the same. Okay. Now, let's move on and talk about our practice question. What do you understand by coral bleaching? Examine the reasons for coral bleaching and suggest the corrective measures in this regard in 250 words. Okay. So, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and stay updated.